when it comes to animation. Successful properties are bound to be copied and ripped off of in order to make a quick profit from confused grandparents at the video store. In the past, there have been some comparisons between DreamWorks and Pixar, with the former creating some similar films like Ants compared to A Bug's Life and Shark Tale when compared to Finding Nemo. Now, whether these films can be considered ripoffs is up for debate, as really the only thing they share in common is similar themes or having similar species. Regardless, despite being critically a hit or miss kind of company, DreamWorks has produced some absolutely amazing films in the past, such as The Prince of Egypt, How to Train Your Dragon, Kung Fu Panda, and of course, Shrek. And as we've said earlier, with success comes ripoffs. Gas leeches. Gas leeches. So today, my pal Phantom Strider and I will be talking about eight ridiculously, hilariously shitty DreamWorks ripoffs. Thanks for having me on the show, George. Let's give these horrifying recreations a gander. Plan B and Little B. Based loosely off the B movie. In the past year, we've seen the 2007 film B Movie go from a relatively forgotten DreamWorks film to a worldwide sensation thanks to internet memes. However, someone saw the potential in B Movie long before anyone else, and that someone is, of course, Video Brinquado. Little B is their attempt to cash in on the original brilliance of Jerry Seinfeld's role in B Movie. It tells the story of a soldier bee who wants nothing more than to make honey, and a honeymaker bee who wants nothing more than to be a soldier. Highly predictable, irritating hijinks ensue. One more thing, Your Majesty. It seems like there's a hundred and one gazillion things a girl needs to learn about what it is to be a lady. You know what I'm saying? We need to look pretty, say the right things, always be elegant, never be controversial, be strong, be smart, be good. Besides bring quad or doing what they do best, and making everything they produce look like Roadkill's uglier cousin Marvin, Little B is pretty standard when it comes to ripoffs. And as if one B movie ripoff wasn't enough, our good old buddies at Spark Plug Entertainment, the creative insane asylum madmen who gave us the Cars Life series, brought their own version to the table Plan B. Okay, for starters, these aren't even bees. They call themselves bees, but they're very clearly wasps. But obviously the writers and animators didn't know or care, so why should we? The film follows a squad of wasps in the Washington DC area, who must challenge the monarchy of the new tyrannical queen. And trust me, it's not at all as interesting as it sounds. And it really just boils down to Sparkplug's insane muddled attempts at political and environmental commentaries. The Queen orders the gang to focus on drilling and draining every last drop of juice from a single flower, because we all know bees typically drill for nectar. But anyway, the film continues down its strange, incomprehensible, incoherent, crash landing political commentary by comparing American slavery in the 1800s to how bees are forced to gather nectar for the queen. Ugh. <laughs> I'm so tired! We all are. Let's get back to work. <laughs> Although Little Bee is an abomination, at least Brinquado didn't have the gall to make comparisons to real life slavery. F minus minus spark plug. This is sad even by your standards. Little and Big Monsters, based off of Monsters vs. Aliens. People familiar with Mockbusters are no stranger to Video Brinquedo. They're a Brazilian company that is known for blatantly ripping off Disney, Pixar, and DreamWorks movies in a hilariously bad fashion. In the past, we've looked over some of their movies, such as Ratatouille, The Little Cars, and What's Up. Surprisingly enough, this film is a prequel of sorts to What's Up, Balloon to the Rescue, despite them both being based off of completely unrelated movies. Little and Big Monsters is based off of Monsters vs. Aliens, but only in its title and DVD cover art. Other than that, it has basically nothing to do with the film, as is usually the case with Video Brinquedo. Who wants popcorn? I want some popcorn! What'd you say there, kid? I can't hear ya! <laughs> The back of the DVD so brilliantly describes the plot as 
two wacky and goofy scientists whose experiments always seem to go wrong manage to do one thing right. They are incredible monster hunters. When one of their experiments gone wrong forces them to put their monster hunting skills to the test, they team up with two witty kids to save the world from some really quirky little and big monsters. With a sweet tooth. Salty popcorn! Salty popcorn with real cheese flavor! Who wants popcorn with a movie? One common complaint about the film is that the monsters aren't even that big or small. They're all pretty average size at best. The movie also has a strange bit of racism towards Chinese people in a scene towards the beginning where a robot dons a traditional conical hat, and then proceeds to spout racist mockings of the Chinese language. Then the professor claims it must be a virus because he's not subscribed to that darn Chinese channel. Needless to say, this movie deserves its 0% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And unfortunately, this isn't the last time we're going to see Video Brinquedo, as they truly are pioneers of making god-awful rip-offs of animated films. Moses, Egypt's Great Prince based off the Prince of Egypt. Before their first major 3D hit, Shrek, DreamWorks focused almost entirely on good old traditional 2D animation. After their first film, Ants, DreamWorks released a monumental hit based on the biblical book of Exodus, known as the Prince of Egypt. It basically follows the biblical story of Moses, where God tells him to free the Hebrew slaves in Egypt. Despite DreamWorks admitting up front the film takes liberties with its source material, it actually remains one of the most accurate depictions currently in cinema. I mean, they don't sugarcoat the stuff like God killing every firstborn child in Egypt. And that's one of those parts that doesn't often make it into that kid's version of the Bible. Unlike many of the other films on this list, this ripoff of The Prince of Egypt follows largely the same story and characters since, surprisingly, DreamWorks doesn't own the original rights to the story of Moses. I, I guess God does? Anyway, coming out the same year as Prince of Egypt, Moses, Egypt's Great Prince, was made by our buddies down at UAV Entertainment known for their other mockbusters such as The Amazing Feats of Hercules and The Secret of the Hunchback, where, spoiler alert, Quasimoto grows wings and becomes an angel. Oh, really? While certainly not the worst film on this list, it pales in comparison to the film it's ripping off. In this film, for some reason, Moses frees the slaves as a teenager instead of as an adult. There really aren't a whole lot of differences, aside from everything being a massive drop in quality. Oddly enough, there is a short live action scene of Jerusalem at the end of the film, for some reason. While this ripoff is fairly harmless, it paves the way for the sad train wrecks that will follow. Puss in Boots, A Furry Tale, and the true story of Puss in Boots. <laughs> Following the overwhelming positive reception to the character of Puss in Boots with his introduction in Shrek 2, the character received his own spin-off film in 2011, simply titled Puss in Boots. The film did very well, leading to a nomination for Best Animated Film, a Netflix series, and a potential sequel, although at the time of writing this video, we're not sure if that's really gonna happen. It goes without saying that a few films about Puss in Boots from lesser companies came out around the exact same time. Puss in Boots A Furry Tale is a 2D animated film, despite the cover showing 3D models, that follows the titular cat after the events of the original fairy tale, now living with King John and the Queen in their unhappy marriage. It was produced by Gai um, Entertainment, known for their work on Tappy Toes, a Happy Feet ripoff, and assisting Video Brinquedo with their distribution of the Little Cars franchise. In comparison to all those horrible films we've seen in the past, the animation in Puss in Boots A Fairy Tale isn't really that bad. Certainly not good, as it looks like Flash animation, but it could be a lot worse. Our second Puss in Boots film, however, is an entirely different story. Despite coming out two years before the DreamWorks film, the true story of Puss in Boots is an obvious attempt to capitalize on the success of the character from Shrek, right down to their very similar design. And while in 3D, the film is actually one of the better looking mockbusters here, with its use of lighting and shading actually making it look somewhat decent. 
Unfortunately, the decency doesn't last very long. As soon as the characters start moving and talking, the worst voice acting comes from our main character, who is surprisingly voiced by William Shatner of all people. Okay, okay, okay. Let's be calm. I just meant with higher heels, I could, you know, with ladies. <laughs> he portrays Puss as a high pitched, raspy, over the top character that is just ear grating to listen to. Why Shatner agreed to this role is beyond us, but he certainly didn't do this already painful to watch film any favors. The plot follows the fairy tale, but it takes many liberties with its setting, tone, and dialogue. And despite marketing itself as the true story, you're honestly better off just sticking with the DreamWorks version. At least your ears won't bleed from watching it. You must be a music freak. A freak? A freak? Who? 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 A freak? A, fr a, fr a freak of what? A music freak. Oh. Life's a jungle, based on Madagascar. I am fond of a little fish, but it must be deboned by my nanny num nums. I call her nanny num nums because she brings me my num nums. They're so yum yum. What does 2012's Life's a Jungle, Africa's Most Wanted, bring to the table that's unique from the other shambling mockbuster disasters we've looked at today? Absolutely nothing at all. Literally nothing as that's essentially what happens in this film. We are treated to endless, long drawn out scenes of very little happening and long uncomfortable silences. Ooh. This is delightful. Life's a Jungle was released to cash in on the Madagascar franchise, specifically the release of Madagascar 3, Europe's Most Wanted, Hence the suspiciously similar titles. Meow. Meow? Meow? You dare utter a defined protest to me? The nerve! It was created by Prevalent Entertainment, whose only other claim to fame was a Kung Fu Panda ripoff, released in 2009. Perhaps Life's a Jungle was a final nail in the coffin of this company. Who knows? The film follows Pip the Dog, a pampered mutt whose life gets turned around when his owners go to Africa. Isn't this great, my boy? I told you it would be fun. Come on, Pip. We're going back into the jungle, and it promises to be awesome. Oh. And they decide to bring their poorly animated mongrel with them into the African plains. Makes sense to me. While there, he learns about his animalistic side, meets other animals, learns about the power of friendship, blah, 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 blah. Why didn't they just call it the filler movie, Talent Wanted? Hardly anything happens in it, and the film just does not know when to end, with more endings than Return of the King, and one million times less charm. In fact, disregard ever hearing about this movie, just go watch Return of the King instead. I guarantee it will be 100 times more enjoyable. Girls would be real nice. Yeah, and I never kissed a girl. Plus, if we had some girls, we could finally get this place organized. How to Train a Dragon Warrior, based off of How to Train a Dragon. And the reward for the most dangerously close a mockbuster title can come before being sued by DreamWorks lawyers goes to How to Train a Dragon Warrior, an obvious ripoff of the 2010 hit movie How to Train a Dragon. This film comes insanely close in many other aspects, such as the dragon's character design. Just one look at it, and you can already tell that it's pretty identical to Toothless, the main dragon from the DreamWorks film, just smaller and with the color changed a bit. It was made by a company from Thailand called Taiga. How to Train a Dragon Warrior is essentially DeviantArt the movie. The art style looks like a poor man's anime with nothing unique about it. An English version doesn't exist, nor does a version with subtitles. 
No IMDb page, no Wikipedia page, no trailers on YouTube, and from what we can gather from a translation on the back of the DVD, the plot follows two boys named H and San on their journey to find a dragon so that they can compete in some dragon warrior competition or something like that. Honestly, I think it's best that this film just stays in Thailand. I don't think the rest of the world is ready for this level of quality just yet. Donkey Shote, or Azelet, or A Donkey's Tale. Based off Shrek. The only talking donkey I know is a friend of mine who hangs out with some green ogre. I'm a horse. I bet you never thought there would be a mockbuster on here that was presented at Cannes Film Festival, did you? Believe it or not, the 2007 film Donkey Shote, whose lead character looks suspiciously similar to Donkey from the Shrek series, was presented at the 2012 Cannes Film Festival, and even had a theatrical release in 2007. Tragically, these presentations actually let it make its $13 budget back. While no shambling zombie remakes of Shrek exist within this film, the poster actually goes out of its way to say, from the producers who saw Shrek. Oh, I get what you did there. You almost fooled two grandmas in the shopping mall. The film was panned, unsurprisingly, but it did somehow manage to get further than most of the other mockbusters. It even got its own video game. The title of the film, Donkey Shote, is actually a play on Don Quixote. The review website DVD Talk panned the film, saying, the best thing about Donkey Shote is its title. A whimsically mischievous little pun. The worst thing about Donkey Shote is everything else. And when you take away that momentary wordplay, all that's left is everything else. The bad. The Little Panda Fighter, Way of the Panda, Chopkick Panda, and Legend of Kung Fu Rabbits. All ripoffs of Kung Fu Panda. Holy shit! <laughs> well, that was unexpected. You know that I'm just... I'm just pancata, right? If you're as graceful as you are with those chopsticks, you'll make it for sure. Oh, sorry, Mr. Polaris. I guess they must have drifted off for a second. You've gotten me out of more dueling jams than I can count. For our finale, we'll be looking at one of the big dogs of Mockbusters, the film that inspires so much shit, it's honestly impressive. 2008's Kung Fu Panda is a classic example of not judging a book by its cover. Its basic name and premise sounds like a pretty generic, pop-culture-filled DreamWorks movie. But in actuality, it's really a deep and emotional journey through spirituality and kung fu, with some of the best fight scenes in a 3D animated film yet. It led to two sequels that just kept improving the formula and continued the story. Its mockbusters, on the other hand, are where you should absolutely judge a book by its cover. There's so many terrible knockoffs of Kung Fu Panda, it's, it's hard to keep track of all of them, to be honest. God, there's just far too many to cover, given that everyone has already taken a crack at it, including the infamous Video Branquito, with their The Little Panda Fighter film. The DVD covers are almost always the same, featuring a panda or other furry character in a kung fu pose with bamboo and other stereotypical Chinese aspects in the background. This can be seen with Chopkick Panda, Way of the Panda, and Legend of Kung Fu Rabbits. The plot for all of these films essentially all boil down to an extremely condensed version of Kung Fu Panda, with a lazy panda or other furry creature wanting to be a kung fu warrior and having to train and learn how to do so in about 40 minutes or less. Well, I think you are just a big stinker, and to show you how upset I really am with you, I'm gonna have to give you a big kiss right here! Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, why is Kung Fu Panda ripped off so often when compared to other animated films? It all comes down to that whole judging a book by its cover detail we discussed earlier. For many of these companies ripping it off, they looked at the poster, saw a marketable combination of animals and martial arts, thought they could get the general idea from the film at first glance, and then proceeded to release their shit into the world. As long as the Kung Fu Panda films continue to be successful, we have no idea if these mockbusters will ever stop. We'll have to wait and see, honestly. Oh, and Rebecca Black is in Legend of Kung Fu Rabbits. Take that as you will.